you know, if you send, um, uh, let's say, a malicious document with macro, there is always the user downloads it, and he is greeted with this enable content. He enabled the content, the malware runs, and a nice, probably, my laptop is very slow now, but it's always a nice, you know, pop up of the malware running, or probably nothing will pop up. And uh, here in my case, I have the calculator running, but this is the normal attacks we have seen so many times. Microsoft introduced something called Mark of the Web. That's, I think, a couple of years ago or something like that. And this is was basically trying so hard to stop this type of attacks. And the idea was simply like this. If I have here, if I'm, let's say, browsing the internet and I'm downloading this, let's say, calc.doc, I am downloading it, opening that document. And what I'm going to see is open the document. Once I click enable editing, I'm supposed to be able to enable content the same way as every other document in the past. Now, Microsoft has introduced the mark of the web to completely block this uh, this macros from running. Even the normal user, like let's say uh, the, the HR or payroll, cannot really go and enable the macro. There's no way for them, for their, let's say, technical knowledge to enable the macro. There's, there's definitely a way but it is too difficult for them. And this is really a good protection, but here's the thing. This is not a 100% uh, end of the macros world. You need to have, you need to think about it as the first layer of protection. So here's the thing. When you download a file from the internet, what happens is this. You go into, let's say, I have downloaded this file, calc.doc. If I get, let's say, get item, um, calc.doc, and let's say stream asterisk. What happened that you will see there is two files. This this actually the two files are being downloaded here or being created here. The calc.doc, which is the file you downloaded, and also another file called Zoom Identifier. It's actually an alternative data stream. Hopefully you finish your challenge. And this alternative data stream, if you try to get the content of this file, let's say we say get contents and then the name of that file, you will see it does have something called Zoom ID equal three, which means it's downloaded from the internet. And then it does have the referrer and it does have the host URL. So it does have all the information about this downloaded file. This is really useful in forensics. But here's the thing, Microsoft um, looks at the Zoom identifier. If there's a Zoom identifier file associated to any file, which has the Zoom ID equal three, that means this file has been downloaded from the internet. And Microsoft, since this new technology, this new uh, uh, measure has been implemented, there has been different bypasses to that technique. One of them was, was very known is to just zip the file with different uh, tools. So there was a, a project called Back My Payload, which allows you to, uh, to pack this, your document file into different, uh, different, uh, you know, different, uh, uh, like dot zip, dot seven zip, dot cap, dot bdf, dot image, so many different versions. You can easily use that from a normal, from a Python script up here, back my payload, and then let's say calculate the doc, and then you can say what's exactly the extension you want. Let's say in my case, I'll choose dot cap. And once you do that, you have a, a dot cap, uh, sorry, um, I didn't do the dot, it's comma. So once there's, um, at the beginning, dot cab used to work perfectly well. You can go here, refresh, download the dot cab file and keep that file. And then let's say you open it. Let me see if I can show the file up here. So you have it here, You to be able to open it, you need to extract it. You can extract it, let's say, I would say in the downloads, Extract up here. Oops, I went too fast. Let's say copy and replace, sure. Okay, I'm using already that. I have a lot of calculators open. Let's extract again. So once you extract that file to download, extract. Copy and replace. 
And now in the My Downloads, let's see which downloads is this? Uh, let's say here in the downloads, uh, I have this new file. I'm oh, sorry. I have the new file has been downloaded. And if you open it, it will still have the mark from the web. Last, let's say a few months ago, or maybe less than one year, you would download that file. You can extract this file, and it will it will be uh, it will not have any root identifier, and it will just run normally. And you will just need to enable macro, and that's it. So this has been like a work in progress from Microsoft. And if you look at the root identifier now for that file, it's a little bit different than this one. So if we go again, it does not have the refer URL, doesn't have the host. But the Microsoft added that any extension, you know, like .image, .iso, .cap, they're going to still add the Zune identifier and add the Zune ID equal three. The only last problem they have, well, or probably will be more, as many new pipasses shows up. The, the main problem they have right now is that if I use Microsoft, uh, Microsoft file extraction, the normal from Explorer up here, uh, this tool is going to create the Zune identifier. But what if I use just 7-Zip? What if the user does have 7-Zip installed, or I can guide them to use 7-Zip to extract that file? Maybe it's a dot seven dot seven zip and I just say extract, let's say, let's let's delete that version of the file and close the documents. Deleting the file. Now I have that. Right click, let's say. Show more options. And then let's say extract extract here, for example. And now I have the calc pack. If I get the content of that Zune identifier, there's no Zune identifiers being created for that one. And basically, I can open that file. And there's not going to be any mark from the web. I can just enable macro. You will say, well, that seems to be complicated for the user. He needs to download 7-Zip if he doesn't have it. He needs to enable, he needs to use that tool to unzip it and then enable content. But there is the problem is that Microsoft is in control of the explorer.exe or their own software, but they're not in control of other software that unzip different files. That could be a program inside another one, or it could be a file that is, or could be WinRAR, for example, it could be that they could guide the user into, oh, download 7 uh, and extract everything from there, and the users will still do it. They're still going to follow the steps. Maybe not all the 100 uh, users or all the, or not, not the 10% or not the 5%, but there's going to be one or two people who are going to be able to do so. And just a simple demo to show you that mark of the web, how it works, and that there is always a way to bypass it. Microsoft still cannot really control the other applications that might help in unzipping different files or unbacking different files. And that leads to this, uh, this problem. So in general, if you are looking into Microsoft measures, whatever this one or any other one, you need to not rely 100% on the Windows default security measures. You need to implement a multiple layer of defense. So that is, that is the Microsoft uh, measures. Uh, but you need to also uh, be monitoring different events and make sure that you understand that macros might run on the system. Either you disable it or you or you control its execution and as well have a logging enabled, whatever from Sysmon logs or from um, or from different uh, or from ADR or whatever the tool you're going to use to be to have the enough visibility to see if there's an attack is happening and able to protect, be able to detect these attacks early on.